Welcome to Fright Fix. I'm Celia. And I'm Sook. Today we have another special guest on our Fright Fix podcast, here to share their experiences with the paranormal. Yes, please welcome Amanda. Amanda, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Where are you from, Amanda? I am from the United States. Um, I'm from Ohio. Oh, cool. So what experience would you like to share with us? So I I just recently moved out of what I believe to have been a haunted house. Um, and I, I have had a past of seeing things. So I'm not sure if maybe I'm a little sensitive um, because I've seen things since childhood. But with this house specifically, um, it was an older house. It was in the historic part of town built in the early 1900s. Uh, beautiful house. Everything was hand carved and it, it was just a dream. And one of my favorite parts of the house was the attic. It was just floor to ceiling wood in different patterns and being in it made it, it made you feel like you're like in a log cabin. Um, It's very peaceful and I I loved it and uh, spent as much time as I could up there, but I don't think I was by myself when I was up there. So we, when we first moved in, um, we noticed that the house was noisy and I had never lived in a house that old and, you know, talking to family, they said it's probably the house settling or there wasn't any insulation in the house. So the walls are, are noisy noisy and it's noisy outside um and I always have music on was the house in the city or in like the countryside it was in the outskirts of the city so it felt country but if you walk to the end of the street you're in the city so it was peaceful but close enough to everything if you wanted um you know to walk to a restaurant or, or something they had cute little restaurants down in town but um I I always have music on um, because I have an issue with my ears ringing, so I don't like listening to dead silence. But um, on the occasion that I would have silence for some reason, um, I would hear lots of creaking, uh, specifically from the attic. The attic ran the length of the entire house. It was like a loft style attic. um, And for a while, I shook it off. Um, I was pregnant at the time. My husband was living with me and just trying to kind of focus on that. Um, So the first time I had a face-to-face encounter with who I like to call my dead roommate um, (laughs) was it was a a spring day. Um, I remember it just being gorgeous outside and not knowing how much you know about Ohio. We get maybe seven nice days a year. Um, (laughs) That's just like England. (laughs) The UK. Yeah, there we go. So you get me for sure. Yeah. No. So when you have those nice days, they, they stick out, you know, you really remember them. And I'm like, let me open all the windows, air the house out and get some stuff ready for the baby. And my husband trying to get my car ready and everything was out in our detached garage, which I could see from the kitchen window. So I could see him out there. I knew he was out there. Um, And I would like look and make sure he was still out there because I'm paranoid. (laughs) um, I was doing the dishes. So I was facing away from our front door and I felt a presence behind me. Um, You know, like sometimes you can feel if someone's looking at you. Um, And I felt that and, you know, thought it was my husband. So I just lackadaisically say, hey, babe. And I didn't hear anything. Um, and usually he would answer me back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, uh, what's this? What's going on? So I, I turn around and in the threshold between the kitchen and the living room was a large, at least six foot, a large black figure. Oh my gosh. Um, Holy crap. It, <laughs> it was scary. Uh, I blinked my eyes and he was gone. Um, and of course I'm assuming it's, it's a he, it just, it, it gave off male energy to me. Um, and turn around knowing that if there is somebody in my house, uh, I'm very largely pregnant and I'm not about to fight them. So I yell out the window for my husband, who is still in the garage. Um, and he comes in and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's somebody in the house. And God love him. Um, this is not the first time I have sent him on a ghost hunt thinking that it was a real person. So really? wonderful for him to... No, 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 not the first time. Uh, there was a time in the very first apartment we had where I was in the bathroom doing what you do. And I heard female voices in the apartment. Well, like young, old? It felt young. Um, at this time, I was in my early 20s. So it felt kind of like a peer um but I still whoever it was I didn't want them in my house and I or my apartment and I didn't expect visitors and 
going back to the being paranoid thing, I always lock the door. Um, so he was working about an hour away. This is in the middle of the workday. I called him from the bathroom, locked in the bathroom, and he drove all the way to the apartment thinking that someone had broken, got there, and of course, there was no one there. At that point, we had only been dating for a few months. So the fact that he stuck with me, it's very sweet. It shows uh, his character. But um, going back to the man in our house, he, my husband came in, um, grabbed his weapon of choice and walked around the house to see if someone was there. And of course, nobody was. Um, and he was very sweet about it. You know, he didn't accuse me of being crazy or anything. Um, so we, we moved on and it seems like that interaction really amped up the activity in the home. Now, um, my husband never saw him, never saw the dead roommate. Um, he, it's not that he's a non-believer, but he's, he's indifferent with it. And I'm very much a believer. And sometimes I feel like if you believe in it, they'll show you, they'll show themselves to you. Um, and I would see him every now and then um, out of the corner of my eye, or, you know, I would just blink and he'd be in the corner of a room. But more than anything, I would be sitting in the living room and the stairs that went up to the attic were in the living room. And I would see him peeking his head like from the top of the door, very tall. And I'm talking the top of the door frame. Did it feel um were, were you scared or like did it feel threatening or at the beginning i because i didn't really know i was scared but as time went on i wasn't scared of him anymore um more interested because i felt like he was interested in me he, mm. You know, why else would he have kept picking? He's a curious kind of spirit spirit rather than a malignant spirit. Exactly. And, you, you know, nothing that ever happened at that house scared me. You know, even the creeks upstairs and, you know, the little peaks he'd give me and, and various things. It never really scared me once I got used to it. I'm just, I'm like, okay, you live here now. And I talk to him sometimes, you know, call me crazy. Right. <laughs> and I would ask him, like, I'm cool with you being here, but can you leave my son alone? That's who I was pregnant with at the time. And um, my son never saw him. We lived in that house up until he was five. So I feel like if he would have saw him, he would have told me. That's a long time to be in the house. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And um, I even have an older stepson that lives with us uh, part of the time. And he never claimed to have seen anything either. So it seems like he left them alone. He just was interested in me. And maybe it's it's also because you were nice to him that he was nice back. I think sometimes that could happen as well. Like you you kind of allowed him to stay and was kind of open to him. Maybe that's all he wanted was just a little, you know, peek into your life rather than yeah. like yeah just mutual respect you know and, and I think it helped that we we didn't really use the attic very much we never got around to it with the children being so young so I think he enjoyed that we weren't up there all the time like that was his space but, um yeah yeah like it was his space and you know we'd go up there every now and then and he may have been mad at us because we did end up kind of using it as a storage unit um yeah. which is fair know. enough <laughs> Yeah, there. I mean, there was a bed up there. There was a chair. I don't know if ghosts use them, but, you know, he had places to sit if he wanted to. Um, but we, we did end up moving out. We moved out um, this year. And um, the housing market was just bonkers. It's just absolutely insane in the States um, because of, you know, recessions and all of the stuff, all of the politics. And we listed our house and then sold it like in the same day. Um, yeah, it, we had something like two or 300 people walk through our house in one day. It, it was it was crazy. There was even a TikTok that one of the realtors um, posted that had like 300,000 views. No Goodness way. Gracious. <laughs> yeah, of our house. In our house, it was nothing to write home about. It was just a little like cottage-esque type house and the TikTok was not the nicest it was essentially like why are all these people here at this this little house um but still it was interesting yeah uh she ended up taking it down because I loved that house and I sent her a message on TikTok and I'm like can you please you know because it's not a mansion to most people doesn't mean it wasn't a mansion to me yeah that's such a strange thing to do to post a tiktok about like obviously people would want a lovely house regardless of how big it is 
Well, and it's perfect for a small family. And that's, that's who ended up buying it was a, a young couple who, you know, they're engaged and they're, they're going to, I, I would assume, start a family there. Um, so it's perfect for that stage. And, you know, we, we had to upsize because we went from having one to three children and we needed more room. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, we put the house up for sale and you know, we were getting this information from the realtor because, you know, they they look at house prices um, in the neighborhood to see what would be an appropriate listing. And one of the previous owners had the same last name as our current neighbor, just the grumpiest, meanest old man. Um, <laughs> he was, he was, we shared a driveway and um, he was just, if anyone was going to have something hidden in their basement that you didn't want to know about, it would have been him. Um, it would have been him. Yeah, just bad vibes, bad vibes. He liked me. He would, um, again, with a shared driveway, our, my car would be parked in the back where his uh, deck was. And I would be getting into my car or just in the back with the kids or something. And he would creep up behind me and go, hi, Amanda. <laughs> Ooh, that's way scarier than your than your um, ghostly roommate. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I would take the the dead guy in my house way over that. He was just it. It was so he was a creepy, creepy man. But anyways, we did find out that the houses, which makes sense with the shared driveway, were built by a brother and a sister. And the layout is interesting because the houses kind of mirror each other. Um, and they're near identical. And I don't know why I didn't put two and two together sooner. Um, but the, the sister owned the creepy neighbor's house. And that was her son. And the uncle owned our house that we lived in. And the attic was his favorite place. And, oh, you know, yeah, which definitely confirmed my suspicion that whoever our dead roommate was, was a nice man. You know, no malicious intent. He was just curious. And I don't know exactly when he died. I know there had been other tenants between him and us because at one point our home was a rental unit. And I, I wonder if they met him. And I know that's not something that a realtor is going to tell you. And I'm sure the statute of limitations has passed on that death. Because um, I think in the States, it's, if someone died within three years, they have to disclose it. I'm interested to see. Unfortunately, we don't have, you know, a close relationship. They're strangers with the new owners. Um, it's just a text every now and then saying, I have your package um, <laughs> when I forget to change the address. But I wonder if... If they've met him, if they've seen him and it, I'm sad for him, you know, I'm hoping he's being treated with respect um, or maybe he won't even show himself. You know, I don't I don't know how it all works in ghost world. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's it's the energy that you gave off that that allowed him to kind of show himself. Um, and maybe they have the same yeah. energy or maybe they don't. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's always hard to hard to tell. It's hard to tell. And a very weird question to ask somebody you don't know is like, oh, by the way, have you met the ghost up there? <laughs> and also, you know, you don't know how they would react to that either. They might say, you're really freaking me out. You know, now I'm getting scared. Or they would say, actually, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would keep an eye on that house and uh, any future listings that may come up in that area, just in case that suddenly does go back on the market again. That, yes, that that would be very interesting. And if they did sell it, then I might reach out on Facebook and be like, now that you're out. <laughs> Uh, was it haunted? Well, and it's, it's strange. I don't know if he is particularly in tune with women. Um, but of course, like I said, my kids, my husband, no one ever saw anything. Um, but my best friend did. She lived with us for a short amount of time. And she had the exact opposite reaction to him. Um, she was scared of him. It was bad energy for her, which is interesting. Um, yeah, I wonder why. I know she she seems very in tune to the paranormal world um, and has had a ton of experiences herself. And I was thinking, you know, maybe he's just territorial, or maybe there's something about her he doesn't like. Um, but 
I, I thought that was fascinating. It was to the point where, you know, she she moved in with us um, kind of as a last resort. But before then, there were times she didn't want to be at my house at night because wow. she was so creeped out. Did she did she see the same thing as you? And had you guys discussed it beforehand? We we had discussed it. I had told her um, because with her being so open to the par- paranormal, she was an accepting person who wouldn't, you know, think that I'm losing it because I believe in all of this. Uh, but I, I don't recall if she had ever seen anything. I know when she lived with us, um, I believe she told me she had a nightmare of a black figure standing at the end of her bed, um, kind of like a lucid dream where you can't tell so much if it's real or not. Um, but who knows if it was him? Uh, she was in, she wasn't in the attic. Um, so I don't see, you know, why he would be mad about her being in the basement unless it's somebody else. But as far as I had observed in that house, he was the only presence that I knew of. So I guess maybe he just was territorial. I don't know. Apologies if I misunderstood something you said earlier on. Did you say that the um, next door, uh, it was the sister who owned that house? And did you say that the grumpy old man is that sister's son? Yes. Yes. And the for the first maybe year, 18 months um, that we lived in our house, the sister was still there. Um, but unfortunately, oh, and she was so sweet. She was so sweet. She would sit on her porch and, and always say hi. And she when she saw um, that I was pregnant, you know, she was thrilled about having a baby. Um, the neighborhood was mostly retirees. So it was fun to have a jolt of new life. Uh, but unfortunately, her health declined and she was moved into a nursing home and then subsequently passed. Um, and then we were stuck with the old man, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Yeah, Considering you got on with the old man and he was nice to you, have you ever thought about reaching out to him and just asking him or just sharing your experience with him about what you felt in the house? I thought about it. He... But with the with the bad vibes I got from him, and maybe it would be different now that we're not neighbors anymore. He was just someone I didn't necessarily want to converse with unless absolutely necessary. Um, and I don't feel like he would be very receptive of it. He he definitely gives off very, um, for lack of better terminology, like sexist vibes, and would probably just say I'm a crazy hormonal woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is unfortunate because it could be an interesting thing for him to know. It could be comforting depending on what his relationship was with his uncle, but I guess he'll never know. Yeah, it's hard to have those conversations sometimes, I think, especially if you're not sure how it's going to be received. Um, no. yeah, have I- you ever thought about, I don't know if, if this could be a theory, that it, if it was her, so the sister lived next door and her brother owned your house, could could the spirit potentially be looking for his sister because his sister went into nurse like a nursing home and like you say passed away i wonder if he was around because he was looking for his sister or was interested in what was going on now that there had been like shifts within the houses that's really interesting because i i mean there was i I don't remember the exact timeline, but of course, the longer we lived there, it got progressively more active. And I could see that activity increasing around the time. I don't know exactly when his sister passed, but around the time that she went into the nursing home. And it would make sense. I mean, if if they're close enough to have a shared driveway and mirrored houses, I could see him, you know, feeling lost, not knowing where she is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And and maybe you have similar energy to his sister. So he kind of almost latched onto you because his sister was gone now. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe he'd found somebody that he could kind of connect to um, now that his sister had gone. It, that makes sense, especially since, um, as far as I know, he did not have children. And his sister, of course, had a son. So I could see, you know, maybe uh, history repeating itself where here's a young woman who has a son, a young son. 
um, because I I only have fun. So I I could definitely see that maybe him finding comfort in that. How how do you feel now, now that you've moved away and that that part of your life is behind you? I, I enjoy our new home. It's nice having lots of space for the children to uh, run around but I do I I become very attached to um, places possessions different things I you know I, I put a lot of good energy to, into things and I do miss that house you know I will occasionally drive by if I'm trying to let the kids sleep or something but not to the extent where it's creepy um, but just drive by to, to see the house you know maybe do a little peek up in the attic see if I see anything which I haven't um, <laughs> but I, I do. I, I miss that house in a lot of ways, but it does feel right that we left. Um, it felt like we, we needed to close that chapter in our lives. And moving on to the new house, of course, I've already had problems here, which <laughs> it is a brand new house. No one else has lived here. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's not as if it's on sacred land. It was a goldfish farm. When, uh, when the realtor told us that, I thought she was joking. So so you're not seeing like the spirits of dead goldfish or anything, are you? (laughs) (laughs) I wish that would be so cool. But no, I I haven't. And it is funny because, of course, they they named some of the roads goldfish and some of the roads marigold. and, And because I like to do research, I did research it and it legitimately was a goldfish and marigold farm. And I'm like, did they just throw a dart and they're like, I'm going to farm those two things. Um, <laughs> I guess someone has to do it. Uh, you know, I guess they probably had the monopoly on it for a while. But um, <laughs> I, I've seen I've seen a woman um, only only a couple times and nothing malicious. And I, I haven't seen her really since we first moved in here. So, of course, my brain is like, maybe you were just hallucinating for some reason. But it does seem every house that I've been in, um, I have had interactions of some kind or even even some places I worked in a hospital for a long time and had interactions there, which that was easily um, accepted because a lot of the other nurses or, or therapists there had also had interactions there. Really? Yes, it's a very old hospital. Um, and the interesting part about that is there was in the 1980s, there was an angel of death there. Um, oh, really? Which, of course, yeah. Yeah, which, of course, is um, meaning a usually it's a nurse who mercy kills people, quote unquote. But he was a like a nurse assistant, a uh, personal care aide. And he I think it was something between 20 and 30 people. He overdosed with medication. Yeah, so, sorry to ask. Uh, this is quite a new concept to me. So when you say angel of death, is that like a, a, a ghost or an actual real person? So it's it's a real person that takes it upon themselves, whether they're justifying it as this person is suffering or they're sick and they're preying on the vulnerable to generally overdose with medication, their patients and, and kill them. Oh, wow. That's hospitals are things places of nightmares anyway <laughs> yeah. alone having and, and it's more uh, it's more common than we think but well, obviously it's not common but i've heard so many stories of kind of angels of death which yes it's it's terrifying because of course these people i worked in a long-term <laughs> rehab so <laughs> The vast majority of these patients he would have had would have been on ventilators. They would have been, you know, severely disabled, whether it's heart problems or um, a lot of people with traumatic brain injuries or spinal cord injuries. So these people are at the most vulnerable they've probably ever been. And this man took it upon himself to end their life when if they're in a rehab facility, they weren't in hospice. They're in a rehab facility. Not that hospice would warrant it, but... I would imagine these people at least had some chance of making a recovery. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in a rehab facility. So he, it's, it's interesting. My mother was a paramedic in the 80s, and she had actually transferred patients to this hospital. Um, so she knew a good amount about it. 
but he he's in jail now um or i don't know if he's still alive but i know he went to jail for it um after being discovered and that hospital he, he worked on the third floor there was four floors and there's one room where one of his victims were that nearly every single week there was a code blue called in that room what does that mean yeah when they when somebody's essentially dying right yeah 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 exactly i don't know uh i know terminology can change hospital to hospital i don't know if it changed in different countries um but yeah they, they would call code blue and whenever code blue was called it's called over the whole hospital and it was the same room every single time and as far as i know 99.9 percent .9 of the time the resuscitation efforts were unsuccessful in that room and it's it was to the point where I'm wondering why they keep putting people in that room. Um, but, you know, hospitals, the room is profit. They're not going to tape it off, even if everyone dies who goes in there. But, yeah, that was definitely interesting. Was that a room that the Angel of Death had worked in? Yes, yes. So he, he had worked on the third floor, and that was in the third floor on the corner of the wing that he worked on most. It would be really creepy if uh, if there was some kind of spirit on that level in that part of the building that that made him do it. It, it, it makes you wonder, because it is a very, very old hospital. Very, very old. And it had gone through, you know, at one point being a tuberculosis unit, where I'm sure thousands of people passed, or at least hundreds of people passed. It's a very large hospital. Um, and there was definitely activity on the higher floors. The fourth floor was the hospice of that hospital. Um, and I believe it was the hospice all the time. And when I had my son, um, I was pumping breast milk, and they gave you a designated room. I worked on the first floor. The designated room was on the fourth floor <laughs> in the hospice unit. And it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying because I was almost always in there by myself. Um, I never had really any experiences, but the vibe that I had was just like, ooh, get downstairs. And luckily I was promoted to where I had my own office and I stopped. <laughs> I stopped. I'm like, I'm just going to lock my office door and stay down here because I'm not about to go back up to the hospice unit um, in the haunted hospital. But it is it is fascinating. I would imagine in my region, it's got to be at least one of the most haunted hospitals, being that it is one of the oldest. Yeah, well, hopefully you never need to go back <laughs> unless you're still working there. I hope you're not. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not. I, I switchly, switchly, oh my goodness. I shortly, um, after that whole experience, had switched to making house visits with patients, um, which was nice, you know, a lot more flexibility. And then I got to run into more paranormal issues out in the country. But it was interesting um, going home to home. And right now I'm, I'm on an extended maternity leave. But uh, I will be interested to see. Uh, I would like to go back there. I was very passionate about what I was doing there. But I just hope they never move me to the third or fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> I might resign. Like, no, that's the deal breaker. <laughs> I mean, you're right. I, I, I can't see how hospitals wouldn't be a hotbed for that kind of stuff because especially if it's old and it's got loads of history, you know, it's, if you're going to have one um, experience in a house, you know, what are you going to experience in a hospital when there's been hundreds of thousands of people coming in and out and, yeah. Or, not, or never coming out. Or never coming out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's, ooh, um, that's dark. <laughs> it's, a, it's a scary thing to think about, I think. Um, but I'm glad you never had any kind of malevolent feelings while you were in there. Yeah, me too. I, I've, I've been very lucky in where most of my experiences weren't. They didn't feel malevolent. Um, and it is interesting because just down the road from where this hospital is, um, is a very haunted bar, which I don't know if you've seen the show Portals to Hell no. with Jack Osborne. Uh, no. Yeah, Jack Osborne, and it's a really good show. He has a whole show where they go to haunted places and try and see if it's a portal to hell. And this is one of the few places that they confirmed was a portal to hell. Uh, right by the hospital yeah so it's it's interesting i wonder how much of the activity could be from you know whatever is coming out of that um portal from hell yeah 
It's very interesting. You can go visit it uh, if you ever come to the States. They have tours, but some people have died after being at the tour. So, you you know, serious? Oh, caution. oh, I thought you were going to say they died on the tour. I was like, okay, well, I'm definitely not going there. No. no, 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 not at all. But it has been, like, Ghost Adventures has been out there. Zach Baggins. Um, a lot of different places have gone to this bar. Um, and all of them did not like it. I have been there once, did not like it, did not go back um but i didn't have anything happen to me i was just scared because of all the stories that i had heard i feel like where you live is just a hotbed for so many like (laughs) paranormal places to to be in one place and something's going on (laughs) yeah it's like a junction uh it's interesting and and we're right next to a very large river and i know some people believe you know large bodies of water can help be a conductor or, or conducive to paranormal activity so i don't know maybe that um there's i mean there's one story from my childhood but i don't know if it would be interesting it was um me uh running into a ghost on the road three times really what the same Uh, ghost on the same road (laughs) the same ghost on the same road yes um and he i lovingly called him the man in plaid because he was a man wearing a red flannel plaid shirt. And I, yeah, I was, I was a server at a restaurant. I was 16. Um, and just drive in. I worked super late hours. Um, I was driving home and out of nowhere. And this is in the middle of nowhere, just cornfields, cows, a couple of restaurants. Um, a man just kind of populates up into the middle of the road, man and plaid. And I, without having time, hit him. Um, and of course, <laughs> there was no b- bump or, you know, I didn't feel like I hit something, but I was still freaked out because I, I saw this man there and I looked back and there was nothing there, uh, which was interesting. Yeah, I, I thought I was crazy. I'm like, you're just really tired. You know, you're, you're seeing things, you're really tired. A couple days later, I was driving the same road with my mother and it was pouring rain, just torrential downpour. And, you know, if someone, if you see someone walking in a torrential downpour, you're going to remember. <laughs> and up the side of the road, going up the hill, my mother and I both saw, same man, same red plaid shirt, walking up the hill in torrential rain. And was that the same place he was the, the last time? It was on the same road. It was um, fairly close to where it was. And um, and she saw him too. Because I asked her, I'm like, did you see that? And she's like, yeah, that's really weird. Because I, I had not told her at that point um, what I had saw a few days before. Because I'm like, she won't believe me. And, and she saw the same red plaid shirt. Yes, same guy, same guy. Um, and of course, we looked back in the rearview mirror. I was driving, looked back in the rearview mirror, and he was gone. And unless he decided to jump into the cornfield, I don't know where he would have gone. <laughs> Which, why would you do that? We've all seen Children of the Corn. Don't go in there. Um, <laughs> don't go in there. No. But he, I, I saw him one more time before I resigned from that job. It was probably a couple months after that to the point where I had forgot about him. And I was driving home from work and the guy that I was dating at the time was driving home from school, um, coming nearly the same route, but probably 10 minutes behind me. And we were on the phone and same thing happened. But instead of him populating himself from the middle of the road, he was on the side of the road and stepped in front of my car. So you drove into him. Again, this poor guy. Um, <laughs> drove into him again, I screamed, which him being on the phone with me, he thought I got into a car accident, um, which thank goodness I didn't. And I'm like, I saw him again, because I had told him about it. And at this point, the guy I was with at the time was fed up and decided he was going to try and chase him down. Oh, because he did he did he think he was a real person? He did. He did. And I'm like, if he was a real person, how have I hit him twice and not felt bumps and he's fine. But the thought was very nice. And you know, he he takes off down the road and goes to the exact same spot I was. I had pulled over and parked at a school um because I was so shaken up I didn't feel safe driving and he didn't see anything. Wow. And nothing on your car, nothing to indicate indicate that you might have hit someone no nothing nothing at all and it was a road close to my hometown and talking to some friends of mine it 
and people who frequented the place that I had worked, some of them had seen the same thing, a, a man in a red flannel shirt on the side of the road. And and did anybody else say that he'd been stepping out in front of cars? Because it seems like he he's almost either wanting to be hit by the car or is recreating like what happened to him that he was hit by a car? Yes, there were. And it seemed like he targeted young females as other people had seen him. Um, I worked with some some older women that had seen him on the side of the road, much like myself and my mother did. But the very young girls, you know, the girls 16, 17, 18, close to my age were the ones who had had this experience. Um, and it was most of them, you know, I was the first to bring it up elephant in the room most of them had had this experience at least once but didn't say anything because they were like I don't want to be judged by it and me you know being an open book I'm just like did you guys hit that dead guy in the road um <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's interesting. I had never thought about him potentially reliving what may have happened to him until you just said that. And that happened to me 13 years ago. I was just thinking, you know, maybe uh, this is a complete theory, but he, he might have been hit by a car with a young woman driving. And so it's almost recreating that. I wonder if there's any way of like looking into any accidents that had happened at that time. Yeah. But then, but then um, why, why would you? Um your mother have seen him yeah i wonder that as well and i i wonder why he he's still on the side of the road but he does not run out in front of cars of men and older women because my mom he didn't run out in front of my car and i don't know if it's because my mom was with me um and that doesn't recreate the exact situation yeah the conditions weren't right so, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. he was still there and walking in the rain of all places but that area, like like you had said before, this whole area is um, very notorious for paranormal activity. Um, I mean that the place that I work is three miles from a place called Dead Man's Corner. Uh, <laughs> that sounds nice. <laughs> where if you go there between, yeah, right. If you go there between two and three a.m., you'll apparently get chased by a faceless man. Oh. Um, well, I'm not, never doing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not signing up for that one. But no. um, it's a it's a place where a very sharp curve on a very steep um, decline used to be, where a lot of people had accidents. So. But I'm not, despite the fact that I have seen so much in my life, I have never actively hunted it. Yeah, that's so interesting. A lot of a lot of the people we've spoken to have, have been exactly the same way. Things happen to them, but they, they don't necessarily go out and look for it or try and tempt fate almost. They just, if it happens to them, it happens. Um, and just yeah. let it, let it be. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, with how sensitive I believe I am, I feel like I would be at a high risk of last, something latching on. <laughs> And yeah. I'm like, I'm good. No, thank you. Yeah, you don't want to tempt fate. You don't want to bring that stuff home with you. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I've been lucky to meet, you know, nice or maybe lost ghosts, but I, I'm not, I don't want anything malevolent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time, Amanda. It means the, means the world having you on as our guest. It's, I've been uh, I've been gripped by your three stories. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for having me. No, honestly, that was brilliant it was so good to hear your stories and like it's just been really interesting across the episodes that we've done how different the stories are but also how similar some of the reactions to 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 ghosts have been like just letting it happen like I was saying or just you know not having that kind of bad energy around it that a lot of people think ghosts are um it's kind of been quite eye-opening for us as well to see the different types of spirits that people may may encounter yeah, I, I agree. I think if people are more open to the fact there may just be lost souls out in the world, it's not nearly as scary as media portrays it. Yeah, that's a good message, a good message to end on. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time, Amanda. And uh, for everyone listening at home, if you have any questions, uh, please drop them in the comments section and hopefully Amanda might be able to uh, to answer them. Uh, and don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with your friends. And like always, please do subscribe.